The California gold rush was unlike anything the United States had ever seen before. Aside from minting millionaires overnight, it was the largest migration of people in U.S. history. The entire city of San Francisco, which started out as a small mining town, probably wouldn't even exist today if it weren't for the California gold rush. There were a lot of lasting effects from this movement, but one I find particularly interesting is the picks and shovels investment strategy. While this term was coined way back in the 1800s during the California gold rush, its application can still be put to use today, and later in the video I'm going to walk you through some modern day examples. Okay, so California gold rush. Uh, chances are you probably didn't find gold. Uh, not saying you're a bad miner or that your pickaxe skills are trash, uh, it's just that gold is really damn hard to find and so it, chances are you probably didn't find any. Mining for gold during this period was really risky and you could wind up with nothing. Okay, so a few savvy business people uh, decided that they wanted to strike it rich in the California gold rush without taking on those high levels of risk. They realized that instead of this all or nothing strategy of looking for gold, they could instead sell the underlying equipment and products that these miners needed. This was a much less risky way to try and make money during the California gold rush. It became known as the picks and shovels investment strategy, referring back to the original equipment that these people sold during the California gold rush. There were other items that this strategy worked for during the California gold rush. Uh, this one guy started selling these new durable pants that miners needed so that they wouldn't rip their trousers while mining for gold. Uh, that guy was Levi Strauss and he's still selling trousers uh, and jeans uh, around the world to this day. Well, well, not him, he's dead, but like uh, his corporation is. So basically by selling the underlying tools, equipment, and products that these new markets need, it's a way to take part in the upside of a new market while reducing your risk. And this still applies to today. Take the last 20 years, for example. Mobile phones were clearly going to be a new high growth market, but at the time it was actually really difficult to tell if Nokia or Blackberry or Apple was going to come out on top. But, 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 but by the way, it's Nokia. I mean, have you seen the N-Gage? Sheesh. We can even go more recent than mobile phones. Take cryptocurrency, for example, which is essentially today's modern day gold rush. Instead of speculating on Cardano or Polygon or whatever cryptocurrency uh, coin is out there, you could instead invest in the platform that makes the trading of crypto coins possible, so Coinbase. Okay, so this channel is geared towards startup investing, so I wanna share how you can use the picks and shovels investment strategy there right now. But first, I do want to invite you to subscribe to this channel. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and as much as I like doing it, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe, like, comment, uh, to show your appreciation, um, and help me grow my channel. So today, one of the best kept secrets is equity crowdfunding. This is a relatively new way for people to invest in startups and it can be done with as little as $100. Equity crowdfunding is on the precipice of becoming huge. If you look at the amount of money flowing into this space, it's doubling, it's tripling every single year. The way to participate in equity crowdfunding is to invest in these startups through uh, equity crowdfunding platforms such as Start Engine, Republic, WeFunder. Now, I will caution that the startups on these platforms are risky because, well, they're startups and all startups are risky but it can pay off big if one of the companies you invest in makes it. So you can take a moonshot and bet on one of these startups listed on these equity crowdfunding platforms and you might strike it rich, but if you wanna reduce your risk, I would recommend investing in the equity crowdfunding platforms themselves. Uh, they provide the underlying uh, technology and commun investor communities uh, for these startups to raise money. And if you're looking for actionable investments right now, Start Engine is actually accepting investments as of today's recording. Full disclosure, I invested in that round, uh, so I'm an investor in Start Engine, uh, but I've also invested in WeFunder. I'm just bullish on the uh, equity crowdfunding space in general. Let me know what you think. Are you interested in investing in uh, Start Engine or Republic or WeFunder? Do you have a favorite one of the three? Are you going to be using the picks and shovels investment strategy somewhere else? Uh, please share below, drop a comment, uh, let's chat.